Welcome back everyone, I'm the Ballet Gamer, and we're back with another Lancer video two weeks in a row. I think that's a record, it's great. Today we're going to be looking at one of the uh, other initial GMS frames that you're going to be playing until rank 3 in the game. Today we're going to be talking about the Sagarmatha, and I'm going to be trying some different editing styles, so if you could all do me a big favor and just comment how you like the presentation of the video, I'd highly appreciate that. But let's get talking to the mech, shall we? And I'll try not to take as long as I did last time. So the Sagarmatha was a, another additionally released mech after the core book was, was first released that gave you a good defender frame to start off with, allowing you to kind of play around with the size 2. It's a size 2 mech, and also it has armor, and it gives you the guardian trait, which allows you to provide hard cover for your allies. So it's a really good mech if you're interested in playing a chunkier mech playstyle, something more along the lines of either the Harrison Armory defense mechs or probably more likely the IPS North Star style of mechs. Overall, I think this is a really good mech to release in addition to the Everest since the Everest is very much just a standard like bare naked frame that you could kind of put anything on this one was definitely much more orientated towards being a defender style mech, and that is exactly the type of mech it is. It is a defender. It's also something to note as well that you always have access to all the GMS mechs, no matter how far into the game you are. So if you're ever in the middle of a mission that, or not in the middle of a mission, but if you're ever about to start a mission where you're going to need some beef on your team, you at least always have a defender mech available to build off of whether you have the pilot skills for it that's a different story altogether but at the very least everyone has access to this which i think is a really good idea so let's talk about the stats shall we top line structure stress always the same but armor is and i i was wrong in the last video i just went through and pretty much calculated all the averages and they're all some fraction not whole numbers but most mechs in the game have about on average at least one armor meaning that the everest before is a little weaker in that category a little bit more squishy than some of the other mechs so this one having one armor is pretty average though i will make mention as well if we look down at the next line here that the hp for the sagarmatha is eight which is interesting considering the everest is 10. Well, if, you know, obviously, you know, armor reduces damage, so you're just not expected to take as much damage per round as the Everest. So reducing the HP balances them out somewhat, depending on the flow. If it's one on one, you're more than likely to average out. But if there's any more than just one enemy attacking you during a single round, then the armor proves to be more beneficial. And that makes a lot of sense, considering that as a defender mech, your job is to go out into the front lines and draw as much line of fire as possible. So the HP makes sense, and there's all kinds of systems and, you know, obviously your pilot skills that can boost your HP, which makes your armor even more efficient. And it is harder for mechs to get armor attachments onto them to make them more bulky. So... Overall, the Sagarmatha is a much sturdier mech than the Everest. Next up is the Evasion and E-Defense, your, your general defenses. Now, most mechs have a standard 8 in their defense, which is pretty standard in the game. Though, E-Defense, most mechs have between 8 and 9, meaning that the Sagarmatha is on the lower end, but still average for E-Defense. Overall, you're just as likely to be hit as most other mechs in both tech attack or normal fashion. So obviously the armor is where you're getting a lot of your defensive value from. On the next line, we're looking at heat. This time we're about average, same as the Everest mech, and most mechs have about six heat capacity, though it's on it's five to six. So it's on the actually the higher end of heat capacity, which means you do have more ability to use heat weapons, which is really good and pretty standard for GMS mechs as the whole point is to allow you to play with as many different types of weapons and styles as possible before you hit rank 3, which is when typically you would get your, or not rank 3, rank 2 is when you would typically get access to 
your frame from whatever other license that you're going into. I don't know why I said three earlier. Rank two. So in any regard, this is the standard and it allows you to go with like heavy guns, which is something I'll mention more about in a little bit. For sensor range, it's 10, which is like the baseline or average. But the thing with sensors is your mech is either a long range mech or a short range mech or a standard range mech. There's not a lot of deviance that is it's either you have like a range five or three or you have a range 15 or 20 or you have a range 10. So the Sagramatha is considered sensor wise to be a medium range mech, which is pretty standard, honestly. And it allows you to use a lot of abilities within that distance. So overall, sensor range is just the best way to look at what ranges your mechs operate at. And for the Sagamatha, it is a medium range mech. And tech attack is zero, which is pretty average in the game. This is similar to the sensors is you either have a bonus, your, your mech is designed for tech use, or it has a penalty making your mech more difficult to use tech actions. It's very typically balanced with either frame traits or even E defense as we'll see in later mechs. So overall, the Sagamatha is just a variable mech. It allows you to kind of build it however you want. So zero makes a lot of sense here. Now the Sagamatha has a four in its repair capacity that is on the lower end of average. Most mechs kind of range it between four and five. Again, pretty basic, not really too much to talk about here. Though it does have the same trait, the replaceable parts that the Everest does, which I'll get to the trait part here soon. But it just means you get more bang for your buck when it comes to your repairs. The save target is 10, which is pretty baseline in the game. I don't think there are actually any saves below 10, though many of the mechs do just have 10. So it's technically the average is like 10 point something between 10 and 11, but most mechs in the game have a save of 10. It, whatever actions you take, whether it's grappling, ramming, or whatever, the your mech pretty much has a standard save for anything that goes off of those types of actions. Yeah, overall, again, just a very neutral mech in that regard. And speed, and another thing I got wrong in the last video as well, the Everest and the Sagramatha both have a speed of four, which actually puts them on the lower end of average. Average in the game being between four and five, there are some very speedy mechs in the game and there are some slow chunkers in the game. Four is pretty standard. Now, something I would like to mention is even though I'm saying a lot of this is standard, that doesn't make it bad by any means. Standard in this game means variable to pilot skills. Whatever your pilot's like affi affinities are for when it comes to mechs will really shine through with mechs like the GMS standard mechs. If you're really good at, say, for instance, hull, you're just going to have a, a, a healthier mech and is going to be able to take a bit more damage than other mechs. If you have a higher like agility, for instance, then you're just going to have a faster mech that is harder to hit. Overall, that makes it really good. And you can kind of do most styles with these mechs, allowing you to in the early parts of the game ranks, you know, one to two. You are well, actually zero to two because you start the game at zero. Oh, that's why it was three ranks, because you technically start at zero anyway. It is very standard for you to kind of mess around. So when you're starting the game, the GMS mechs are really good at showing the difference between you and other pilots. And I would say even if you were doing some kind of like match in a game against another Lancer, then using GMS mechs would be the best expression of skill rather than what mechs you pick, which I think is actually a very fun idea. All right, and last is the system points. And this is actually something very interesting that I got through some of my research, is the average system points is somewhere around seven. Granted, there are very few mechs in the game that actually have just seven system points. Meaning that even though the Sagamatha and the Everest have six, that is kind of more the standard frame to frame. But if you were to, you know, tabulate all the points together and then kind of average it out, it's actually closer to seven, which I find is interesting. You figure the GMS mechs would have a little bit closer to the higher end for system points to just have that extra 
customizability that you would expect from GMS, as this is kind of the standard try anything you want style of mechs. It's very interesting. I will say there are a lot of mechs in this game that have six and five, but there are also a good amount that have like seven, eight, even 10 system points, which is pretty crazy. Overall, it's a, it's below average, but frame to frame, it's about average. If that makes sense, it's, it's very, very strange. In any regard, six is still pretty good and you can do a lot with six plus with your... With your systems pilot skill, if you invest in that at all, obviously it increases your system points. So overall, it's not a big deal. And most defender style mechs don't need a ton of points anyway, as they only need about five or six to get everything done for being defensive, though it leaves very little else if they want to add anything to their kit. Overall, it's lower than what I would expect for the kind of plug and play style of the GMS mechs, but it's also the standard is all of them have at least, or all of them have six system points. So very interesting. Overall, the biggest difference between the Sagamatha and the Everest is that the Everest is tankier. It has one armor and a little bit less health, but overall it is about the same. Granted, the biggest difference being from their traits and from their core system. So the Sagarmatha has Guardian, as I mentioned before, which allows your allies to use it as hard cover. This is really good, and it means you standing between you and your enemies. If the enemies want to shoot your allies, they're going to have a harder time doing so. It's overall, the, it's, a, it's a necessary trait if you're going a, a Defender Mech style which is really good, and honestly, it's very potent. It's honestly one of the most potent effects in the game because being able to provide cover of any kind in this game means damage differences. Like, it changes how much damage is dealt in the round and how sprout out it is. Very few things kind of get around cover, so I think this is very good for a mech trait, especially for a GMS mech, and... Again, just proving that Sagamatha is just the defender mech if you want to try out playing a defender playstyle. Heroism, though, is a huge trait. It's really good. Once per scene, when you brace, you do not lose any actions doing so, which is pretty massive, as brace is just a really good reaction. When you brace, if you didn't know, you gain resistance to the damage of the attack that you're bracing against, all damage, including burn and heat. And until the end of your next turn, all other attacks are made at a plus one difficulty, making you much more defensive. Honestly, once per scene, you can just, if you're in heavy line of fire, just brace. It doesn't really cost you anything and you just reduce a bunch of damage and then you become harder to hit, which is really, really good. And the effect, or at least the downside typically to bracing, and the reason why you wouldn't do it unless absolutely necessary, is when you brace, you can't take any other reactions until the end of your next turn. And on your next turn, you can only take one quick action. You cannot overcharge, move normally, take full actions, or even take free actions like anything you might have with an NHP. That is pretty massive and it makes bracing an overall negative action you don't want to do it unless it's going to save your life which is a kind of terrible decision to make unless you're the sagarmatha in which case if you're the sagarmatha it once per scene you can take this insanely powerful action with no downsides though i will state that the heroism doesn't say that you can still use reactions. It says specifically without sacrificing any actions or movements on its following turn. So I'm assuming if you do brace, you do forfeit any other reactions you might be able to take on your turn, such as Overwatch. So just something to keep in mind, but overall, Heroism is an insanely good frame trait and unique. No other mech has anything similar like it in the game which is actually pretty good. It makes Sagarmatha probably my favorite of the GMS starter mechs. And the last trait is replaceable parts, as I mentioned earlier. Essentially what it does is that when, you, uh, when you're resting, you can restore structure to your mech for one repair rather than two. 
making your overall repair capacity really good in between fights, though it doesn't do anything necessarily in a fight if you need to make any repairs. Overall, it's a general feature that allows these mechs to be really good at more prolonged missions. So something to keep in mind, if you have a mission coming up that you know is going to take a bunch of time, multiple fights or whatever, you might actually want to consider GMS mechs. Now we're going to look at the mounts. The mounts are interesting. They, they range pretty widely in the game. Again, something I got from my research. Most mechs have, on average, about two mounts. Just because of the sheer quantity of ones that have one mount, there's a good number that have two as well. I would say mech to mech, it's about three is the average. But overall, if you, again, as I said, if you consider all the, the different mechs and how many mounts they have and you average the numbers together, it's actually closer to two. Meaning that the Sagramatha, similar to the Everest, is very solid, having three mounts and having three of the most common mounts in the game. A flex mount, a main mount, and a heavy mount. This is very standard and allows you to use super heavy mounts if you want to. It pretty much allows the most freedom to choose your general style and giving you a good number of weapons to work around with. It, it's pretty standard and it's normal for GMS mechs, so there's not really too much to say about this, but I just figured I'd mention that it's a very solid mount setup. Now, looking at the core system, it's the ultimate support system in the game, I would say. Maybe not. I don't know. That I, I guess it's very contentious. But Rallying Cry is okay, I would say. Once, in, once when you activate it, all your all allies within line of sights of your mech gain resistance to all damage and heat, making making it really really good if you got a bunch of Harrison Armory mechs on your team, and gain a plus one accuracy on all checks and saves. These effects last until the end of your next turn. Now this is really good as a team benefit, and it can give your team either the ability to withstand a very powerful barrage. From a bunch of enemies this is actually a system i would consider popping pretty early in a fight when you have a lot of enemies as you're more likely to take a bunch of damage you have to time it to when you're in range of most enemies but when you hit that range using this ability is going to get the most bang for your buck for that resistance though i will say the additional benefit of getting resistance to heat actually means that if you have a bunch of allies who just want to go ham on the next round you can go first in your initiative pop this and then everyone on their turn can be overcharging using their heat weapons doing anything well harrison armory mechs would probably really love you for this plus that plus one accuracy that is a very powerful effect my only gripe with it and why i think it's generally okay is it's a one and done once you use it in the scene it only lasts until the end of your next turn. So you guys get one round to use this really good benefit. When you compare that to the Everest, that kind of just goes sicko mode. And my light fell. Ugh, darn. Oh, well, whatever. I'll finish up here. That just kind of just goes insane and gets a bunch of buffs for the rest of the scene. I mean, like that one you can pop just at the beginning and you're good because you're more likely to get your at uh, your core system back unless you're having multiple battles in essentially the same day with no rests this one though is one round and even though it's very powerful and can be used in some very good ways if you use it incorrectly it you're just wasting it at that point and the everest there's no wasting its ability honestly unless it's like a very very short fight in a day that's going to have multiple fights it's very hard to misuse the Everest core system, while the Sagramathus core system, I would say, is a lot more likely to be misused and not get the full benefit for it, making it kind of meh to me personally, though I will say it does have a lot of punch and it does do something really, really good. I would just say on average for your average player, it's probably not that great of a core system. So that's the Sagarmatha, which is honestly probably my favorite of the GMS starter mechs and a very potent defender mech to have on your team. 
I would even say that it's really good to keep on your roster. Make sure yours is built up if you ever need it on a mission. As if you aren't someone who typically picks defender mechs for missions, if you have a very hot, you know, hot zone you're going into with lots of enemy fire, getting a souped up, even a juggernaut style Sagramatha is good to have, in my opinion. But that's going to be it for me for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully I got a different, better presentation style that makes this a little bit easier to watch. Please let me know in the comments below if this worked out for y'all. And hey, while you're down there, if you could hit that subscribe button, I'm going to be trying to do Lancer content at least for the immediate future, especially with Armor Core coming out here soon. I'm going to try to do at least one Lancer video a week. So if you want to see more Lancer, subscribing is the best way to do it. And liking the video is the best way to support me if you don't feel like dedicating yourself to a subscribe. So either way, I appreciate you all watching this video. And well, thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games and leave the bad luck to me. I'll see you all next time. Bye.